We are here and we are strong. Let's be counted as we move on. Make a difference, change lives as we tell our different stories. We are capable, beautiful. We are born to do great things. We're unstoppable, incredible, cause we're differently abled, differently. Hello there, and a very warm welcome on Able Differently. It is said that the darkest nights produces the brightest stars, and today we're going to focus on a few individuals who have faced cause of challenges in their lives, yet they still stand tall and tell their stories. I'm Beatrice Nyokabi. And I am Raymond Owiti. Welcome. Welcome. Cause we're differently abled, differently. Shadi became physically challenged after a nanny poured hot water on him. Since then, his life has been in and out of hospital with the hope of one day being well and living his dream. Take a look. Born in a family of three, Shadi is the second born who was born normal, but as she was growing up, the nanny taking care of him burned him and escaped. <laughs> Nikampeleka private sumumu wakaniambia itawezekana ni mpeleke Kenyata. Nilimpeleka Kenyata. Kenyata aliishi almost one year. Aliishi huko kabisa. Wa madaktari walijaribu kumtibu. Yenye walijaribu vile wanaweza lakini sasa alibaki akabaki na alama ya ulemavu. Siku 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 furahia ama, ama siwezi pendelea lakini sasa Afadali angekuwa hivyo badala apoteze maisha. Although ako hivyo lakini sifurahi hata kidogo. Amebaki na ulemavu wa milele. Nimejaribu kumtibu. Imeshindikana nimejaribu kutambia mo hospitali imeshindikana. Amelema mguu na amelema mkono. Legal processes to make the nanny pay for what she did started, but this were in vain. Tulienda tukaripoti kwa polisi. Huyo msichana kajaribu kutafutwa penye watu walikuwa wanasema anaweza patikana hatujawahi mpata hadi wa leo. Hajawahi onekana. Upon staying in the hospital for more than one year, Shady was discharged. Unfortunately, he had not fully recovered. In the quest of making him get well, his mom came along a hospital which would help, but due to financial constraints, this was in vain. Hiyo mkono kuna wakati nilianza kumpeleka hospitali nyingine ya jamaa doctors hapa Madhare walikuwa nataka afanyie operation na hiyo operation naye pesa yenyewe alikuwa nataka ikanishinda sasa ikabidi niwachane na hiyo maneno sasa kabaki tu hivyo mkono yake ime imekuwa hivi si straight sasa hata hiyo mkono hakuna kitu inaweza fanya hiyo mkono ime kwa paralyzed imekufa kabisa Schooling for Shady has had its fair share of challenges. Being in a regular school, Shady's self-esteem is usually lowered as he at times misses school. Ndi kwa shule. Shule pia wanapata changamoto. Nimempeleka shule ya watoto wenye wako sawa, hawana ulemavu. Sasa huko pia anapata changamoto saa zingine. Jusa zingine huko watoto wanamchekelea, wanaona si sawa na au wengine, wanajaribu kuimitate vile anatembea. Hiyo huwa inamfanya saa zingine hata shedi anaogopa kwenda shule. Ju wanasema watoto wanamchekelea, kwa nini ayuko kama watoto wengine? Namwambia asijali siku moja Mungu akinijalia nitampeleka shule yenye nafaa na yeye, hata walimu kwa shule wamesema Nione vile naweza mpeleka shule yenye inafaa na yeye ju wale wenye wako wale wenye wako huko si sawa vile yeye yako sasa yeye inafaa aende shule shule ingine yenye inafaa na yeye vile yako ju wako na ulemavu due to his condition shady can't do any hard work maybe anaweza chora anaweza toa vitu kwa meza Unaweza mtuma kwa duka kitu kama pampa alete ama credit. 
hizo kazi rahisi rahisi. Batata kuvuka barabara inakuanga shida. At least nataka kama navuka barabara mo sahi barabara yetu nataka at least akuwe na mtu mkubwa mwenye nami anaweza msaidia ku ku cross barabara. Jua anapata shida. Bonding with his family well is what Miriam has instilled in every member and is proud of it so far since it has made Shady feel appreciated and loved. In fact, ndugu yake mkubwa na mwelewa tena na mpenda sana. At times ana msaidia kitoka shule ana mwambia Shady leta vietu zako ni kupigie brush. Shady wakiamka asubuhi anachukua brush yake na ya Shady anaweka dawa toothpaste wanaenda wanasugua meno kisha na moshea uso at times kama mimi maybe siko kama mimi mtoto na nisumbua namwambia shedi kuja kwa bafu ni kuoshe akisha muosha namwambia shedi ingwa unavaa hivi ana support naona anaelewa kabisa tena na support sana kuna good relationship in between two of them every day shedi goes through a number of challenges and her mother puts them into perspective awezi kujiosha inabidi na muosha hawezi kubeba vitu mzito jua kuna mkono moja. most of the things inabidi namfanyia hata kuvaa nguo kujipaka mafuta vitu kama hizo namfanyia juu ya hiyo ulemavu ako na mkono mmoja to guardians and parents Miriam urges them to love and cherish those children who are able differently kwa wale wa mama wenzangu wenye wako na Watoto mlemavu kama huyu wangu ningewaomba wasiife moyo wasifungie watoto kwa manyumba wasitenge watoto wawape all their rights wawape parental love hao watoto wasione wametengwa juu sikupenda kwao kukua katika hali hiyo juu hakuna mwenye anaweza penda akuwe mlemavu so sikupenda kwa wakuwe katika hali hiyo so msiwatenge msiwatusi msiwafungia kwa nyumba sasa zile wengine mnawapeleka shule au mnawafungia kwa nyumba maybe unaona aibu uwezi enda na yeye pale uwezi tembea na yeye unaona aibu kwa barabara watu watakuona hapana just try to give your kids parental love wapende waone mnawapenda waone si au pekee ndio wako hiyo na mtu anaweza pata ulemavu Anytime unaweza pata ulemavu hata unaweza zaliwa vizuri but unaweza pata unaweza panda gari leo upate accident upate ulemavu si kupenda kwa mtu which means inaweza kukupata in any time in any age so pendeni watoto wenu msiwatenge na mwape good education si mnasomesha wengine na hao walemavu mmewafungia kwa nyumba Welcome back. A few years ago, polio was the biggest cause to physical challenges, but not anymore. Caleb Odhiambo survived a polio attack while he was still very young. And now, he has a story to tell. Take a look. Polio is an infectious disease caused by the polio virus. According to World Health Organization 2016 health report, in about 0.5% of polio cases, there is muscle weakness resulting in an inability to move, shortening of muscles or both over a few hours to a few days. Mr. Caleb Odhiambo Obomba remains to be a rare case whose situation started at the age of three years after he was born healthy and very joyful. Odhiambo remembers vividly that back in the early 1980s, no one knew much about polio in their village and that his mother had to make an extra effort including visiting local herbalists and pastors to see their son healed. I was being told that it started like uh, something to do with the polio. So, you know those days, uh, uh, parents did believe that uh, it could be taken to maybe a medical doc, a uh, herbalist or uh, sort of prayer and so on. So they took a lot of time, even though by the, by the time, I, I, I can say my father was enlightened because he was already working, he was in the forces. His mother's efforts did not bear any fruit, leaving all the ambos tibia and fibula bones deformed with crutches as the only means of movement. When I was taken to 
hospital, then they realize uh, <coughs> uh, my bones, that is the tibia and fibula on my right leg, had already, uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, had already developed a problem that could not now support me. So when I went to, to the hospital, that was Memorial Hospital, the, 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 the Armed Forces Hospital, then they realized uh, they had to do away with the, the tibia and fibula, the, the two bones on my legs. And uh, I stayed in the hospital for around uh, four to five years. His father, who was working with the Kenyan forces, came into his rescue at the age of four years, taking him to the Defense Forces Memorial Hospital in Nairobi. They wanted to cut my leg, but uh, I refused because I told them, just leave it with me, yeah, even if I'll scroll down. But I remember crying that was he cut him young. <laughs> Caleb's cry of someone in deep pain saved him, his leg from being amputated to being replaced by metals by doctors to aid his movement to up to 10 years of age. Unfortunately, by the time he attained 10 years of age, his father had retired from the forces, making it difficult to access the hospital. So, uh, finally, uh, they, 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 they inserted, uh, I do hear they call it, uh, uh, is it kachuma or uh, plastic? They did to me a surgery, then wakatoa iso bones, the two of them, then wakanyekea iyo chuma that is now supporting me. So here I have nikona chuma, and uh, you see when I walk, uh, uh, I'm so much down. So it came a time that my father had to leave the forces. And uh, this gadget was supposed to be removed when I was 10 years. So it passed when I was almost 13 to 15. He was later referred to Kijabe Hospital for the removal of the metals, although it was already too late. So that's when they did for me the, the last surgery, that they changed the, the other gadget and the one that I could use to grow. But you know, it had already passed. So they also suggested that now I need a shoe that is raised to help me walk. So at times, like when we meet, you saw me with that shoes that is now helping me to walk. But when I'm in the house, I don't put on that shoe because I can just walk. Even down there, I can just go well, so long as I just put on my slippers, I just walk down. With his love and passion for football, inspired by his home team, Gormahia, Odhiambo offered to become the football coach of a girls' team. I was a goalkeeper. Then, uh, actually, when, I, uh, when we used to play football, to me, I knew I could even play with the Ebo. So when it reaches time for uh, sports, then I realized uh, teachers could replace me with somebody. Uh, that is when I started realizing Kumbe, uh, I'm not able to allow to, to be a goalkeeper in a able sport. But uh, in terms of, I used to play also volleyball. In volleyball, they left me. Actually, I was playing volleyball. I played volleyball up to the district level. Thereafter, when I was in secondary, now I used to play volleyball, but I could not match the, 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 the other students. Uh, who are able. Then uh, I, I had an interest in football so much, then uh, I started uh, coaching the football girls. Actually, I was the first in that school to train football girls up to the provincial level. That is something that uh, I'm happy of, and uh, I left when the school was now moving on well. He started off his career as a teacher, and today he is a successful man working with the county government of Nairobi. After high school, then I went to teaching a bit, then uh, taught for five years, then left, then I joined the public service commission. So after joining the public service commission, I had an opportunity to be employed by, the, by then uh, the Grand Coalition government by then the Ministry of Livestock. So I was employed as a clerk there, worked for some time, then the pollution came. We crossed to county. So when I went to county again, 
uh, in the process uh, in the process as, as I was working I went back to university Oviambo is a dedicated family man a true helper in the house and a father of one son Willis Smith and the joy of his wife tells it all Nampenda pako strong he used to help me with house chores the way you've seen and he used to tell me to go to gym or to do some running with him because he used to go each and every day morning gioni he will go to the gym and to do some of the exercise Caleb also expresses his passion to help other people living with disabilities in various ways, including being trained as a sign language interpreter, calling upon parents not to hire their children with disabilities, and also about his personal initiative to inform others about the government helpful programs. I used to be a leader when I was back at home, but that was an organization for persons with disability, mainly they were deaf. So I went to some of the programs to, to learn how the sign language, yeah, how I could communicate with them. And uh, just like we having an interview, uh, I, could, I would be able to, maybe somebody talking, then uh, I hear then trying to write for somebody who is able to translate in, 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 in sign language to help them. Odhiambo well, also challenged those who are able differently to stop being donor-minded, but instead, focus on the differently godly given gifts in their lives. We started an organization for disabled, but it didn't work because uh, the challenge we are receiving is uh, people come in those organizations uh, thinking that there's kind of a donor coming to help them. Then when they come and realize there's, no, there's nothing like that, and uh, there is a task calling them now to accept and we need to do one or two things in able to survive, you see people disappearing now. Similarly, Udiambo challenges different organizations tasked with supporting those who are differently abled to focus more on creation of awareness programs, especially in the rural areas where many people are yet to accept disability. You have to accept. You know, I'm different with somebody who got an accident. There's, you know, that is a challenge that even I've seen in the society. Get somebody, got an accident, is now a disabled. But in the real sense, this person cannot accept that he's a disabled. Actually, I normally joke with some people, I tell them, this is a person who should not be an official, maybe even in this organization for disabled. Because this is a person who can still sleep and dream that he was <laughs> riding on a bicycle. Of course, me, I normally ride, on a, ride a bicycle. Yeah, I do it. But is somebody who can still dream that he was doing all the things with his legs or arms and so on. He's still not believing that he's now a disabled. But to me, you know, I came to live, is like I was born like this, though it started when I was three years. But you see, at that age, it forced me now, not even forcing me, I lived knowing that I'm a disabled. Kibuti Muridi is a person who is visually impaired. Despite his condition, Muridi has never stopped to explore the possibility of making an impeccable legacy of his life. Take a look. Kibuti Muridi was born 40 years ago in Embu town. At a young age, just like the other children in the society, he joined school with an objective of preparing for a brighter future. <laughs> Na vile niliendelea kukua kwa uh, kwa naendelea kukua ndio macho yangu ikakuwa inaanza kupotea. Kwa muda kwa kwa ilijulikana kwa muda wa miaka kama saba hivi. Ndio wazazi walianza kuona macho yangu ni kama ione. Na kwa vile mtu hajawahi potea macho yeye macho yake kipotea na vikirianga vile anaona ndivyo watu wengine wanaona Kavika mahali sasa ikakuwa mwaka wa nikiwa na miaka kama 13 hivi ndio sasa macho yangu ilitambulika vizuri haioni ikiwa imepotea kabisa his education was totally interfered with and he dropped out of school to adopt a different lifestyle 
what I'm saying, Sule Na vile nilivika kirasuani wapo jipo sasa macha yangu yaja kupotelelea sasa shule mambo ya shule ikavika hapo mwisho Kibuti try to seek for medical attention in different hospitals in order to restore his vision his efforts however bore no fruits after realizing that he had become fully blind Nika pereko hospitali uko yambu ikatengenezwa moja ikakuwa sawa pia ingine ikutengenezwa Mm, kutengenezwa vile ilianza kuona nikakaa kwa muda wa miaka kama tatu hivi ikapotea ikaanza kupotea tena. Je, nikaletwa hapa hapa nini na Robi Kikuyu. Kaenda ikatengenezwa hiyo jicho ile lilikuwa limetengenezwa lila, likatengenezwa tena. Nikaona vizuri tena. Baada ya hiyo kutengenezwa ikarudi ikakaa Sasa mwaka wa elfu mbili ikaanza kupotea tena. Na ilipo tengenezo ilipo anja kupotea mwaka wa elfu mbili ngakaa mpaka mwaka wa elfu mbili na mbili ndio ilipotea tena kabisa. Na ukiangalia unaweza ona ni kama inaona lakini hakuna kitu hata kidogo hivi wa inaona. Uh, I reported a cabsat, sir. We didn't reduce hospitality. Tena, my doctor, you are going to say, My yes, ten As years progressed, he started making drums, constructing and repairing houses. Kibuti planned for frequent visits at his neighborhood with the motive of helping fellow residents in repairing electronics. Me and Akumka Nikingi are paivi. I look on a tenganeza madrama. Nisi madrama zinyo watu wanapiganga hizi za kanisa hizi. Halikuwa naunda hizo ndo tujikimu. Halikuwa na muangalia paka na shanga. Mazingina machozi natoka na shindo. Eh. <laughs> Lakini na shukuru yote. Jue anangangananga by the way. Tuko mm. utuna kutengeneza uh, drums hizo. Anachesa keyboard. Mm. Amaweza tengeneza mtu radio. Yetu kama hizo. Questions were raised with allegations that he used evil powers to undertake his daily activities. Despite all that, he decided to exploit his talent through singing and playing piano in church. And as a result, he has produced a number of songs. I was able to sing nikakuwa naweka pesa kidogo kidogo natoa shindi yangu na vile nitoa shindi yangu ya kwanza nikaimba na nika hiyo CD nili niliuzaucha tu kidogo alafu nikarudi kwa ile kazi nyingine yangu sababu eh vile nilirudi kwa ile kazi Nika tengene, nika pata pesa ingine kidogo, nika, nika tengeneza shindi ingine ya pili. Sasa niko na shindi zangu moja, ya pili na ya tatu. Kibuti met his wife Millicent Nasimio at a church when she noted the strange things that he did. Since 2017, they have stayed at Ongata Rungai and they have collaborated to acquire a source of living. Millicent and Kibuti frequently visit construction sites to break stones for ballast. Mimi nilikuja huku Nairobi nikakaa kama 2 years tukakutananga na kivuti. Alikuwa anatucheza keyboard church. Hasa hapo ndo nilikaa nikaona the yana struggle. Nikafikiria ndani ya roho yangu mbona nisijoi nui mtu at least. Nimsaidie mali penye hawezi. Sasa so, nilikuja hapa ilikuwa mwezi wa pili last year kanza kukana eh tukapita challenge nyingi sana juu hiyo maisha alikuwa anakaa ilikuwa ngumu but nashukuru mali penye tumefika juu ilikuwa ngumu sana kukana eh ni desemu na kukana mtoto kwa sababu hawezi jitoa hapa ajipeleke kama salani hapo kujisaidia lazima uende na eh kama ni kazi lazima uende na eh hmm. ndio challenge tunapitanga na eh so, zingine 
kama hiyo kazi hiyo ndio sasa ndio kazi na style tufanye jua kuna kazi nyingine kando na hiyo hiyo ndio ako na kipana hiyo ndio anaweza fanya sasa inabidi ili bidi hata mimi pia nimjoin nikasema hata hakuna haja basi nifanya kazi kando na yeye ni yeye nikae karibu na yeye ni kweli nikimpatia support yangu the couple request the society to respect and view those with disabilities the same as everybody else tu kuambia wengine wenye wanaishi maisha kama sisi tunaishi waendelee kujipea moyo kwa sababu kila safari mkishikana mkono mtasonga Article 6 of the UN Convention states that state parties recognize that women and girls with disabilities are subject to multiple discrimination and in this regard shall take measures to ensure the full and equal enjoyment by them of all human rights and fundamental freedoms. In the quote of the day we take a look at the saying that goes the darkest nights produces the brightest stars. What do you think? The challenges that we have bring about the solutions to our problems. Innovations and inventions that we have are brought about because of the challenges that we have. And therefore, I agree with this statement. That's all for today. See you again next week. I am Beatrice Nyokabi. And I am Raymond Owiti. Goodbye. Goodbye.